Welcome everyone to another mathematics and high energy physics seminar at Physics Latin. Today we have the great honor of having Professor Denny Ketskeri. He is currently director at the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in Bonn. He is known for his work on the geometric Langlands program, a project that tries to unify two major areas in mathematics, representation theory and algebraic geometry. After completing his PhD at Tel Aviv University in 97, Kate Curry was a research fellow at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. He then joined the faculty of the University of Chicago, where he remained until 2005. Then he moved to Harvard University, where he was professor until around two years ago. Since 2021, he is one of the directors for the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in Bonn, Germany. Kate Curry was a, has made significant contributions to the geometric Laglands program. In particular, he has developed a number of powerful tools for studying representation theory of reductive groups over function fields. He has also played a leading role in the development of the theory for geometric crystal, which is a new approach for the representation theory of cat moody algebras. Kekori work has been recognized with numerous prizes, including the prize for the European Mathematical Society, the Clay Research Fellowship, and the Clay Senior Scholar Award. He is also a member of the National Academy of Science. He is a leading figure in the field of mathematics. His work has had a profound impact on the geometric Langlands program, and he has helped to shape the direction and research in representation theory and algebraic geometry. So we are very lucky to have him with us today. Thank you very much for accepting this invitation. Thank you very much. So let me just repeat that uh, I haven't, I don't have an agenda for this talk, so it's completely improvised. And I really encourage the audience to ask questions. So kind of, we can go in many different directions and basically depending on what you guys want. All right, so let me start. So geometric Langlands, well, it exists in many different paradigms. There is um, local versus global. Uh, there is unramified and ramified. So I'll start with something which is conceptually, um, and there's also quantum and classical. So I'll start with something which is conceptually maybe the easiest. So, so it'll be global. Unramified and classical. And so, depending on well, how this lecture goes, we might be able to do some other cases. For example, we might, we might talk about quantum, we might talk about local, we might talk about the ramified. All right. And so, but even here in this framework, so first of all, in this framework, geometric Langlands is supposed to be an equivalence of categories. So that's the categorical level of it. So it's not an isomorphism of spaces, not a bijection between sets, it's an equivalence of categories. And so, but even here, there are three different contexts. So three different geometric contexts, depending on what kind of geometry we have to do. So let me just list them. So there is maybe the most flexible one, and it's the, the framework of D modules. And in this case, one lives, one does algebraic geometry over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Geometry. Ground field K and characteristic of K is zero. So if you wish, I'm specifying what kind of sheet theory I'm working with. So I said geometric Langlands will be in the equivalence of categories, but these categories are sheaves on something. And this specifies what kind of sheaves. So then there is 
So classical sheaves, so this is also called the Duran, Duran context. So here is the Betty context. And here we're doing sheaves in the classical topology. Sheaves topological. And here, our algebraic geometry is specifically over C. And now the context is elatic. Here, we're dealing with elatic sheaves. And so here, the algebraic geometry is over any ground field. So you can ask if it's any ground field here is characteristic zero, why don't I always work with the Latic? The thing is that our category is much richer in the in the context of demodules. So now I'll introduce the objects of study in each of these cases. So it'll be, if you wish, the uh, the what in physics is called the A side of um, of, of the duality, and in mathematics we call it the geometric side or the automorphic side. So let me already pause for a second and, and see if people have questions. All right. Uh, hello, I have a question. Can yes, you hear please. me? Yeah. Uh, so what we are trying to do is like building the equivalence between these three categories. No, 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 no. So, so this is the options for which category we'll consider on what we'll call the A side. Okay. So, and like each of these options will match something on, on the B side. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, these options were established before like Langlands started working or after? So, so, so Langlands was doing classical Langlands theory, and this is geometric. So classical Langlands theory tries to establish a bijection between something on the automorphic side and something on the Galois side. So the classical Langlands theory is not an equivalence of categories, it's rather a bijection of sets. And so, however, one can obtain it from this third option. So although this is an equivalence of categories, there is a what we call the decategorification procedure that again, if there is time, we'll get to it, that allows to recover Langlands' original theory. So this, in some sense, is an enrichment of his theory. Does this answer your question? Yeah, please go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I just want, yeah, that's perfect, thanks. I have my, my microphone. All right, thank you. Right. So now I'll introduce the object of study. So X will be an algebraic curve, smooth projective. over our ground field K. So and, and again, as I said, there are three options. It's either any field of characteristic zero or specifically C or an arbitrary field whatsoever. Say, let's say algebraically closed. And we also give ourselves a reductive group over the same K. And so now I'll introduce the geometric object of study is called the automorphic space. And so it's denoted in this scary way, bungee. 
properly, I should write bound G of X, but I'll usually omit the writing the X. So what is it? It's an object of algebraic geometry over K. Specifically, it's what's called algebraic stack. So let, let me reduce stacks. So, but let me, so what are stacks? But before we answer what stacks are, let's ask ourselves what schemes are. Schemes are not, is not object of algebraic geometry. So I think we all know what affine schemes are. So affine schemes, that these are the building blocks. So if you wish, they are by definition, spectra of commutative algebras over K. So they are, if you wish, as a category, it's, we take the category of commutative algebras over K, and we take the opposite category. So to each algebra A, we assign its Zariski spectrum. And we don't even specify what it is. It's a scheme. So, and now, if you read any classical book, a scheme is usually glued from these things. Pretty much like manifolds are glued from domains in Rn. So you have a specified topological space, and it's covered by these affine schemes, and you specify the kind of what happens in the overlaps. So, and this definition has existed for maybe uh, 100 years, but with all due respect, this, this is a bad definition. So, in fact, you don't need to bother about topological spaces, about gluing about anything. And in fact, you don't have to bother about schemes at all. So all you have to do, so just to have a, an efficiently running theory, is to use growth index language. And you don't need anything more than affine schemes. So let me tell you, let me give you the definition of the most general algebra geometric object. And any other object that you will encounter will be a particular class inside. So let's do it. So unfortunately, this more general ge algebra geometric object doesn't have a nice name. So usually it goes by the name P stack. So instead of reducing stacks, we'll talk about pre-stacks. So what's a pre-stacks? Pre-stacks are just all contravariant functors from affine schemes, from the category of affine schemes, to, well, and now you have to decide how much homotopy theory you want to allow yourself. So, you can say sets, but that'll be too restrictive. Better say groupoids. And this will be enough for all practical purposes. Groupoids, I guess you guys know what groupoids are. Groupoids are categories in which every morphism is an isomorphism. So it's almost like a set, but like it's every object every element of the set has a group of automorphisms, but it's richer than that. So different elements of the set can talk to each other, but in the way they talk to each other, have X and Y, there's a form space, my groupoid is called C, and it's acted on simply transitively by automorphisms of X and automorphisms of Y. Uh, well, these are groupoids, like when you talk about objects such as vector bundles, they don't really form a set, they form a groupoid because you can, two different vector bundles can be isomorphic to each other. 
So, so you consider all functors like this, but opposite. So contravariant. So let me give an example. Let me like tell you how the usual definition of a fine scheme cut out by um, equations is such a functor. So take a bunch of polynomials, T1, T, Tn, Tm, T1, Tm. And so, so it's n polynomials on n variables. And to it, you know that you can attach to it the affine variety, which is the space of solutions. But now let me tell you what it is as a pre-stack. So what you do, so you have to every affine scheme, you have to attach, well, in this case, it would be a set. And affine schemes opposite, by definition, these are just commutative rings, commutative algebras. Okay. This is, these are polynomials with coefficients in K. And so here is your functor. You take your algebra and you attach to it the set of all n tuples that satisfy the equations. In other words, you're given a bunch of equations and in, instead of trying to solve them, you say, let me look at all possible solutions, not just in any ring. And this assignment, just send a ring to the set of solutions is a functor. And this is your pre-stack. And so, as I said, any object of algebraic geometry uh, is a pre-stack. So let me, give you another example. So this is an example of an affine scheme. Let me tell you what the project space is in this language. And it's a very, very kind of handy definition. So what's the projective space? How do we think of the projective space? Projective space is the space of lines inside the n plus one dimensional vector space. And so the idea is that we want to say what it means for this family of lines to move in a family parameterized by an affine scheme. So I want to specify the set on from back A to Pn. So and in this way, I'll be saying that Pn is a functor. And so here's what it is. The datum of a line bundle on spec A, i.e. a locally free A module of rank one, plus let me call line bundle L. And an embedding of L as a sub bundle inside the structure sheet. So, as a module, it's just A, n plus one copies. Such that the quotient is stored in free. And then, if you take any point of spec A, this will be, give you a line in the n plus one dimensional vector space, i.e., this element of, of the projective space. So this is kind of a very efficient way to think about projective space. You don't have to worry about this proj definition and so on. And as I said, anything in algebraic geometry is this form. So this is what Grothendieck taught us. So this is Grothendieck's language of points. So let me stop now. So this was a crash course on algebraic geometry. And let me see if people have questions. In the chat, um, but is the 
just maybe with the, related with the first slide. He says, as a physicist, I expect that the physical application is about the Betty case. Is that right? Um, not quite. So, no, it's more the Durham case. Or physicists have some kind of strange mix of Durham and Betty cases, which is, but it's it's more than Durham case. We'll get there. All right, let me proceed a little bit. So, so now we have to introduce this bound G of X, and it's also some kind of pre-stack. So let me simplify, and I'll take the particular case when the group is GLN. So that'll be easier. And so I'll say what it is as a pre stack. So, I'll, according to what I said, I have to specify the corresponding functor on the category of affine schemes. I'll denote affine scheme by the letter S. So, I want to say what is home from S to one, well, in this case, GLN, I'll do one GLN. Okay. So, here's what it is. So, unlike the previous cases, this will no longer be a set, it will be genuinely a groupoid. This is the groupoid. Of rank N. Vector bundles. On S times X. So you should think of it as follows. It's really kind of the intuitive idea of the modular space. If S is a point, we're saying what are points of the modular space of GLN bundles? So if S is point, we're looking at what you see the right hand side. This is just the groupoid of rank N vector bundles on the curve. And what this definition does, it tells you how to move in families. So, and this is our algebra geometric object, the automorphic space. So let me give an example that we'll start from. So example, but n equals one, this one, zero one best is otherwise known Is the Picard of X. Very classical object in algebraic geometry. It's the moduli space of line bundles on the curve. So now, let me pause and let people ask questions. Okay, there's someone in the chat. Could you give us a definition of the Picard? Well, it's exactly as I said. So Picard, is it happens to be, it's still a stack. It's not quite a scheme, but just as I said, I and mean, it's on from S to the Picard is the the groupoid of line bundles so the modular space of line bundles on your curve. It tells you how and what it means to have an S family of line bundles on the curve. So let's proceed. So so now we have this algebra geometric object on G of X. So again, so we stack over our ground field. And now we'll plug in, plug it in in one of our three options, depending on what the field is. And so, so here's what I mean to say. So let me call it temporarily Y. Let Y be an arbitrary pre stack. So in these three cases, you can consider the following options. The wrong case, 
you can consider all the modules on Um I'll tell you in a moment what the modules are. So in the Betty case, you can consider, as I said, all topological sheaves. In the Aladi case, you consider all Aladi sheaves. So this, these are kind of this may be more familiar, but these are high-flying objects of algebraic geometry. I guess I should comment on them. So what are D modules? So, and moreover, D modules are an arbitrary pre-stack. So here's how you define them. You first, in each of these cases, you first define what these objects are on affine schemes, and then you use the definition of pre-stacks as a functor to obtain the general definition. So let me tell you what they are in the fine schemes. So let Y first be an affine scheme. And so for simplicity, I'll assume that it is smooth. So so to do for the drum theory. So, but before we do D modules, let's recall what quasi coherent sheaves are. So, quasi co applies is just the same as the category of A modules. And now I'll tell you what D modules are. So these are modules for a certain associative, associative algebra. And this algebra is what's called the algebra of differential operators on A. Diff A modules. So I have to tell you what this diff A is. So diff A is the algebra generated by functions and vector fields. with the usual relations. So namely, so functions multiply as they should, but now I have to tell you what happens if I commute a vector field with a function. What you want to see is that it's, it's another function which is newly derivative of your function with respect to the vector field. And also, I want that the commutator to vector fields is their commutator you wish on the left, the commutator take, is taking place in the algebra differential operators, and on the right, it's the commutator as we know it is a vector field. So you take this algebra with these generators and these relations. It may be pretty nasty if A was not smooth, but if it's it smooth, it's the right object to consider. And, and you consider modules for it. These are D modules on an affine scheme. And this is the object of study. So on an affine scheme, I still have to tell you what happens with pre stacks. So let me again pause and see if people have processed this definition. So there was a question in the chat I didn't see. Can you show it again? Okay, the question is any of the two uh, will be equivalent to the Lie bracket? To what bracket? The Lie bracket. Oh, yes, yes, this is the Libra. All right, so, so now, so I said, 
what what the modules are on are on an affine scheme. Now I'll tell you what they are in a free stack. So, but first we have to establish functoriality properties. So suppose you have spec A1 mapping to spec A2, a map of affine schemes. S1. So let me first, and that corresponds to a map of algebras, A2 mapping to A1. And first, let me talk about quasi coherent sheaves. In this case, you have a functor that goes in the opposite direction from quasi coherent sheaves on S2, the calls map F. It's called the functor of pullback. What is it? We said that these guys are just A1 modules. So these guys are A2 modules. So I must have the ability to um, take an A2 module and produce an A1 module. And what this functor does is the following. Take the functor of tensor product. So F upper star of some M is by definition A1 answered over A2 with M. So using the fact that A2 maps to A1. So this is the founder of inverse image. And by the way, so let me, with, with this definition, let me tell you what quasi-coherent sheaves are on the arbitrary stack, free stack. So, so if Y is a free stack, we define quasi-coherent sheaves by as follows. These are compatible collections of, let me say it like this, the following. For every affine scheme mapping to Y, by means of the map that I'll denote, um, Little y, I specify an object that I'll call f sub s y beside quasi coherent sheaves on f. I know what quasi coherent sheaves are in affine schemes. These are models for the corresponding algebra. So what I do, I kind of specify the pullback of my sheaf to every such s. Plus, I specify the compatibility. What does the compatibility say? It says the following: that if you have Pair of fine schemes so again the data of pre-stack all it gives me is how to map affine schemes into it so suppose we have a commutative triangle so so then so what I need to do is the following I need to specify the isomorphism between the pullback that I defined here of f s y with S prime, Y prime, plus some other compatibility conditions that I won't mention now. So again, like if you want to specify a quasi coherent sheet for the target, all you have to do, we have to specify a compatible collection, collection of quasi coherent sheets and find schemes that map to it. So that's a scheme of definition of quasi co. And that's a very efficient definition also just for, uh, for schemes. So, so this is how we set up the theory of quasi coherent sheaves. But next, I'll have to set up the theory of D modules. So, but let me again pause and see if people have questions. In the left hand side, why is it necessary to consider the spectrum of the ring and not only the ring? Uh, need to consider what? Like to work around the spectrum of the ring. But no, respect, no. So, so like we see, spectrum is just a symbol. We only working with the ring, so we we don't even like you don't have to know what the risky topology is. It's you're really working with the ring A. Spectrum is just a symbol, and that's the okay. beauty of it. You can you can forget everything you learned about the risky topology. At some point, it becomes important, but not now. Does this okay. answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Now let's move to D modules. So again, 
have to do the same kind of pattern of functionality. So this is. So to have a map of rings, but what you want to do, you want to move, you want to map modules for the ring of differential operators on A2 to it'll be denoted by upper chic. So you won't have such functor, but unlike the previous situation, you do have a map of rings, but you don't have a map of rings of differential operators. So as geometrically, you know that functions pull back, but vector fields push forward. So you don't have this. So what do we do? So in a general question, how do we define a functor between categories of modules between two rings? Well, it's good when you have a homomorphism, but it's not necessary. What you do need is a bimodule. And so here is what this bimodule is. <laughs> so the claim is that if you can consider if you consider Consider this tensor product. So it will be a right module over A2. But if you can think, if you think carefully, you will be able to make differential operators on A1 act on it on the left. Left module. over this A1. And so let me call it this A1, B2. And using this by module, you can define a functor. So the functor F of a chic extends some guy M to this diff A1, A2. Answered over the A2 with M. So M was a left module for diff A2. This guy was a right module for diff A2. So we can tensor them together. And this action on the left makes it still a left D module. And so this defines your functor. And then you run the same procedure as a specified for a fine scheme for quasi code to define what, what D modules are on an arbitrary free stack. We have defined what D modules are on our arbitrary free stack. And in particular, we now know what D modules are on this fun GLM of X. So this is the Durham context. So I, have, I still have to tell you uh, what we'll do in the Betty context and the Aladdin context. So in the Betty context, what you do, well, as I said, Sheaves topological on the same algebra geometric object. And what do I mean by that? So how so we have to set up the theory of topological sheaves on arbitrary pre stacks over C. And you do it by exactly the same principle. So if S is an affine scheme over C, you could consider the underlying topological space. And you can consider the key. So sheaves topological on S is just old sheaves of vector spaces. Sheaves of vector spaces
on this analytic space, but I said vector spaces, but vector spaces over what? So here you have the flexibility. So you, you are working algebra geometrically over C, so that's your geometry, but you can consider sheaves of vector spaces over an arbitrary field E of coefficients. So these are spaces, vector spaces over some other chosen field E. And so now you know that if you have a map of fine schemes, induces a map of the analytic spaces. And there's also a pullback functor. And you run the same definition as in the case of quasi mirror sheaves to obtain the category of topological sheaves um, on your pre stack. And it's the same thing in the Aladdin theory. Just instead of saying topological sheaves, you consider Aladdin sheaves. But so here I want to mention one more thing. So this procedure produces as a category, but it's not just a category, it's a linear category. So you take two objects, Hamilton between them is a vector space. So here, this vector, this vector space is over the same ground field as the algebraic geometry was over. So it's a category linear over the same K. So here it's linear over your chosen field of coefficients E. It has nothing to do with field of complex numbers. And here it's linear over, over QL bar. So you consider Galactic sheets. So here, the ground field equals the field of coefficients. Here, the ground field is not necessarily equal to the field of coefficients. And here, it's definitely not equal to the field of coefficients. All right. So, so far, we have introduced the, so these, these are the geometric slash automorphic slash B, uh, slash A size of geometric blendlands. And so next step will introduce the uh, B side of geometric Langlands, also called Galois or spectral. And then geometric Langlands will say that A side equals the B side. However, I propose that we make a 10 minute break and do the spectral side after the break. So there will be again Betty Durham and Aladdin versions. And the Aladdin here is more complicated, so maybe we'll leave it aside for now. And the group is GLN, so I'll describe to you the B side. And so here's the geometric object. So Durham theory. You still have your curve, and the object of study is the following. It's the the stack of local systems of X of rank M. They're wrong. So let me tell you what it is. So it's again an algebraic stack. And over K. And um, so I'll tell you what it is. So I have to say, now you usual way was home of S. So remember what Banji was. So if, if these were vector bundles on the product S times X, and here it will be the following. It's the group of the vector bundles On S times X equipped with a connection to 
long X, vector bundles of rank N. It looks deceptively what we had before. So the difference is that we now have a connection along S. So if S is a point, we're talking about vector bundles on the curve X with a connection. And, and in the Betty setting, here what one has to pay attention. So remember, so here I said that this algebraic stack over the same ground field K. In the Betty setting, we chose a different field of coefficients E because we were considering sheaves with, of E vector spaces. So Betty, we reduce log cis Betty GLN, and it will be an algebraic stack. Over E and um, I'll tell you momentarily what it is. So, so let S be spec A. So on These are the following things. So we are considering local systems in the topological sense of of A modules. On X of rank N. So let's say if X analytic. So imagine the X with an algebraic curve over C. If X analytic is just the usual Riemann surface. If you regard it as topological space, if you have a topological space, you can talk about local systems of either vector spaces or modules for some ring. And we're considering modules. Kind of local systems A modules such that this the fiber of this local system at every point it's a locally free A module of rank rank N. So that's what we're considering here. And you can also rewrite it as follows. So you know that local systems are essentially the same as representations of the fundamental group. So you can also think of it as follows. Log this Betty. These are homomorphisms from I1 of X, which is a finely generated group, to GLN of A up to conjugation. And, but, so, but A here, because we're doing topological sheaves with of E vector spaces, so A is an algebra over E. So this is an algebraic stack over E. All right, and now I'll tell you what the category is on the, on the spectral, so E psi, B slash spectral slash Galois side. The category that we want to consider is the following. So we said that if you have an algebraic stack, you could attach to the category of quasi unitary sheaves. This is the category we attach. So the Durham setting.
is this. This is the wrong. And in the Betty setting, it's similar looking category, but in the Betty version of Losis. So this was an algebraic stack over K. So this is a category linear over K. This is the category linear over over E. All right. So now we've introduced the B side. Now I'll state the geometric level of conjecture. I'll state it correctly in the drum setting and a little bit incorrectly in the better setting, and then we'll see what happens. So geometric level of conjecture. For the group GLM, and it's kind of important because otherwise, if you have a more general group, the group gets swapped with this Langlands dual. So here's what it says: the ROM setting. It says that D modules on BUM GLM of X. So I need to modify the right hand side slightly. Let me not worry about it. So this is what the uh, Langlands conjecture says, and it's it's now it's now a theorem. It's a work of many many people, and uh, Betty. It will be not quite like this, and we'll see what needs to be corrected. The Galois side stays exactly the same. And here, so as we said, we need to talk about topology of achieves. But as of for now, this category is too large. And what we'll have to do, we'll have to restrict this category. Something that I'll denote by NILP. And I'll try to explain uh, what this is uh, in a little bit. So this is so this is the shape of Langlands conjecture. So and it's now it's all been proved. All right. So let me mention the people. So it's um Arinkin, uh Dario Beraldo, Lin Chen, Joachim. Self, um, yeah, then right. Um, all right. So, and before we proceed, so I want to explain. Kind of the plausibility for this and why one has to put this new potent condition. So for that, we'll consider the case of n equals one, when in which case this conjecture has been known even before it was formulated, and it follows from what's known as Fourier Mokai transform. So n equals one. So as I said, in this case, one gil one. Known as the deep part. And so now I'll quote a general theorem. Um, it's called Fourier Mokai equivalent. So the claim is that there is a canonical self equivalence of the category of quasi computer sheets of the deep part of the term. Fourier Mokai. 
and it had to do with the fact that the Picard self pulled. So let me tell you how it's defined. So let's let's be very general. Suppose we have a free stack and you have a point in it. So it's mapped from the point scheme to us. In this case, you can to this datum, you can attach what's called the skyscraper in this point. And it's a very particular object of the category of quasi gateway ships. And so I'll specify some very particular points and I'll tell you what quasi gateway ships they go to on the other side. So, namely, pick a point of the curve X. Pick an integer n and consider the line bundle. It's a line bundle on the curve. But we said that line bonds on the curve are exactly points of the Picard. And so here, so we can take the skyscraper at this line bundle. And this is an object of this category. And now I'll tell you what it corresponds to. So it's supposed to be a certain line bundle on the Picard. And I'll tell you which one it is. It's the line bundle. Let me denote it L sub and X whose fiber at the point of the Picard given by a line bundle L prime is the following. You take the fiber of L prime at X and you raise it to the power N. So if you've never seen it, it may sound a little bit overwhelming, but this is really kind of the bread and butter of algebraic geometry. So open some, open some textbook on, on the Picard and you'll see this construction. So again, it may look a little bit non-trivial. It is non-trivial, but it's very classical. So and this is an equivalence of categories called the fourier mokai transform. But it's something that's really worth knowing. So let me just pause and see if people have questions. All right, so now let me proceed with the discussion of the drawn case. So remember, we had, we want to compare the category of V modules with the card with the category of quasi coherent sheaves on tackle one dimensional local systems. So now, whatever D modules were, these were modules with an action of differential operators. In particular, the ring of functions act to them. So the category of D modules admits what's called the forgetful functor to the category of quasi gauge sheaves. So now we're right, quasi gauge sheaves. Here again, this is Yamokai. And so now the stack of local systems as we defined it, these were line bundles with a connection. And there's a forgetful map to just line bundles and they can take the function of direct image. This is forgetful map. And so the Langlands functor in the case of GL1 is an equivalence that makes this diagram commute. So let me um, 
And so the formula that I wrote for Free Bukai essentially tells you what this Langlands functor, what this Langlands functor does. And it's really an equivalence of categories and kind of that proves the geometric Langlands conjecture for GL1. So that, again, this is the Durand, the Durand case. Oh, sorry, I should have written Durand, sorry. So, but now let's look at the Detti case, and there you'll discover something different. So, you, you will consider quasi linear sheaves on well, the Detti version of log six. And what you will see that it corresponds not to all um, topological sheaves here, but it will correspond to least sheaves. So where least is that we consider not all topological sheaves, but topological sheaves that are local systems. So this is a valid statement. It sits inside all sheaves. So you are singling out inside the category category of all topological sheaves, a certain subcategory, and it's only this subcategory that will be equivalent to your category on the B side. And in fact, it will be the shape of the language conjecturing anti version in general. So for arbitrary M, we'll have Loxius GLM anti will be in fact equivalent for the form hill. Or this nil is a condition on what's called the singular support. So it was discovered by David Nadler and David Bensley that one really has to put this condition. All right, so this is the shape of the language conjecture. It's F over a finite field of Q. I'm doing a function field classical language. Again, global and ramified. So we consider one G of X. This is before, but note that this field is not always very close. It's really a finite field. And this is a discrete groupoid. Sorry, I consider one G. It's, it's um, sorry, it's a uh, algebraic stack, but now I consider this the set of isomorphism classes of FQ points. So this stack is what's called non-quasi-compact. If it were quasi-compact, it would be a finite set, but otherwise it's, um, it's just a discrete set. And so the initial interest of Langlands' theory is to study the space of compactly supported functions on the set with, say, QL conditions. And so here's what Langlands predicted. He predicted this these functions, they have to do with, let me call it GLM, with local systems into GLM. So what we consider, we consider log cis GLM arithmetic. 
So the definition is somewhat technical. It's the modular space of representations of the fundamental group of X in the children modular conjugation. And so this is, and we're looking at elastic representations. This, this is an algebraic stack over QL bar. And so here is very rough kind of formulation of Langlis's conjecture. He said that what do you have? Roughly speaking, you have to take this and consider global functions on it, just regular functions. So this turns out to be a little bit incorrect. And this has to do with the fact that the stack has singularities. So the actual, it's actually a theorem now for GLN, it's still open for other groups, is that what you have to do, you have to take the dualization. So here we use theory of growth and individuality. So this is the statement of classical language. And it's note that this is a, it's an isomorphism of vector spaces. Before we were talking about equivalences of categories, this is an equivalence of vector spaces. And it's in fact obtained from this. So the way to prove it is to take the equivalence of categories in the Aladdin context, which I didn't talk about, and what's called take um, the categorical trace of Frobenius. 